Welcome to the television broadcast of Bethel Christian Church with pastors Donald and Dana Hunter. We believe in one true message from one true and living God, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want this message of Jesus Christ to be preached in all of our city, in all of the United States, and in all nations. And we don't just want preaching of words, but we believe in demonstration of power. We welcome you to Bethel Christian Church. Now, the purpose of the tabernacle was so that God might dwell among his people. He said, let them make me a sanctuary. For what reason? So I can dwell among them. And... God, and it's just the way that he is, in his sovereignty covered the sanctuary itself with badger skin. And then he said, give me a layer under the badger skin, a ram's horn, a ram skin dyed red. And then under the ram skin dyed red, give me Eleven curtains of goat skin. And I want you to pair them in five and in six. And then under that layer, there's another layer of skin. Scarlet, blue, white, fine linen. A whole other layer of skin under there. All of these all of these represent different revelations of Jesus Christ. The world, when they see Jesus, they see badger skin. That's just a, a dull whatever it is. There's no beauty, no form that we should desire in. If you see under, because this is what you have to understand about this, by the time you look at the, the goat skin, I'll show it to you in verse. Thirty cubits versus twenty-eight. There's a reason why I'm saying this. I hope you have your spiritual ears on. Lord, I give you the praise. Exodus 26 and 8. Yeah, that's a beautiful uh, illustration. The badgers being right there on the end. Then you have the ram's skin dyed red. And then you have the goat's skin. I need my little pointer. Goat skin. And then you have the blue, the scarlet, the white and uh, the purple, which is synonymous to his kingship. They're all different revelations. Now, when the world see him, they see the badger skin. And if you, I wanted to show you this pattern here, because there is a pattern, even when you look at this tabernacle. If you look at Exodus 26 and 8, And we'll go back to this in a second. I'll start at verse 7. It says, And thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be the covering. And I don't know how many of you know that goat is the primary, is the primary sin offering. Okay. Now that's significant. Make a covering of make a, a curtains of goat hair to be a covering. Of the tabernacle, eleven curtains shall you make it. Remember I said eleven, and then you divide it into six and five. The length of one curtain shall be, and here's the key, thirty cubits. And the breadth, four cubits. Eleven curtains shall be one measure. And then you look at the next verse and you see where he divided them in sixes and fives. Now when you look at the curtain that's under that curtain, the curtain that is made of the scarlet, the blue, the fine.
Antoine linen, which is the white, and the purple. Lord, I give you the praise for this. And that's at Exodus 26, 1 and 2. We're talking about heavenly things here. Thou shalt make me a tabernacle with ten curtains, fine twine linen, blue, purple, scarlet, with cherubims of cunning work shall thou make them. Next verse. The length of one curtain shall be twenty-eight cubits, and the breadth of one curtain shall be four cubits. Every curtain shall be of one measure. The goat's hair was thirty cubits. Under that curtain, or under the goat hair, the eleven, and, and they're divided in pairs of five and six, you have the fine twine linen, the purple, the scarlet, the blue, and I want you to make them of twenty-eight. And the reason for that is, is because when you put the goat skins over the blue, the scarlet, the purple, the white, That layer is hidden. Therefore, the goat hair is longer. It's concealed. So he made the lower level shorter for a reason. Because for you to see what is under the goat's hair, God has to give you revelation. I intentionally hid it. There is another pattern in the scriptures, and you have to pay attention to these patterns. How many of you know 50 is very much associated with the Spirit of God? The Holy Spirit was poured out during the Feast of Pentecost, which is 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. So there's a revelation here where 50 is associated with the power of God, or associated with the power of the Holy Spirit. There's another pattern here that will show you that the lower the level, the greater the glory. In other words, you're seeing the deep things. The deeper things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We're seeing the deeper things. There's a pattern here when we look at the patches which were used to couple the curtains. When you look at the patches, and I'll show you this in, in this particular verse here. I want to give you the praise for this. Yeah. Let's look at Exodus 26, verses 5 and 6. Exodus 26, verses 5 and 6. It says, 50 loops shall thou make in one curtain. Fifty loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain, that is in the coupling of the second. And thou shalt make them take hold of one another. So they were connected to one another. And this is what it used to bind them. And thou shalt make patches of gold. And couple the curtains together and the patches, and it shall be one curtain. So we see. For the curtains that were made of purple, scarlet, blue, and fine twine linen, which are all different revelations of Jesus, the tatches were gold. And I needed 50 of them to go in the 50 loops. So what we're seeing here is a revelation of Jesus here, anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. And at this level, the Holy Spirit is manifesting the glory in the purest form. Because the touches here are gold. The only way that you can understand that a revelation is being spoken here is to look at the goat's head. When you look at the goat's head, 
Trump's hair, go, uh, uh, which is the layer above the scarlet, the blue, the fine twilight, and then the purple. When you look at the goat's hair, it's put it on verse 11, Exodus 26 and 11. These are the patches associated with the goat hair. Again, it's just design, these are designed to couple them together. These are the little couplings that they use. The patches associated with the goat hair is what metal? Brands. It's a more inferior glory. Because you really have to be at the deep things. You have to be at the deep things to see Jesus in the fine twilight, in the purple, the scarlet, the white. That's a deeper revelation. It's a deeper revelation than him being simply the sin offering. I see more when I see blue. I see more when I see the scarlet. I see more when I see the purple. I see more when I see the fine twine linen. But at the level above that, I see just go to it. Couple it, five, six. And the tatches here are not gold, they're brass. Brass is kind of like gold, but if you notice about brass, it's a dark. It's a darkness to it. It's like gold. But it's a darkness to it. And that's what it's like. It's like, it's like the glory, but there's a darkness to it. I, I don't fully see it clearly. So if I'm seeing him at the goat level, my tatch is there, and it's 50 tatches because, again, he's still anointed. He is still the sin offering. And, of course, there was a time when he was... When he was the sin offering, even as the scripture says, don't anoint it with all because it is a sin offering where Jesus himself prays, having become the sin offering of the world, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because you cannot put oil on sin. And he became sin who knew no sin. So he prays that amazing prayer cross, and there's darkness upon the earth from the sixth to the ninth hour. Now, if I see him again, now above that is the red skin dyed red. One might even say that is the Muslim's persuasion of him. They don't see him as the son of God. If you did, you would throw away your Quran and listen just to him. But they say he's simply a holy man. And a ram skin dyed red signifies one who is holy because a ram is a holy animal used in the sacrifices of God. And we see it dyed red because of his sacrifice, the blood, the blood. In other words, he was a righteous man and a good man that simply died. It's another thing for you to see him as the goat. Because if, when I see you as the goat, you are the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sins of the world. That's a deeper revelation. The tatches there are now brass. He is the Lamb of God. Oh, the sin on It's come to take away the sins of the world. Now again, God said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Put that picture of the tabernacle back up. I'm about to go somewhere else now. I see another revelation under where the taxes were gold. We start getting into Golden pillars. Yeah. See, God said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And then he gives us a bunch of revelations of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So that when I look at the tabernacle and I want to get to that glory that's on the inside and hit it, who do I see? Jesus. And if you're a worldly man without no spirit on you, all you see is badges kicking. This may be the atheist persuasion. <laughs> There's another level, even under that fourth set of curtains, where you start to touch the gold. show you something with the pillars now. Pillars of the court. Lord, I give you the praise. Exodus 27. Yeah. Verse 11. Likewise, for the north side, the, their hanging shall be a hundred cubits. Now, this is the outermost layer where you got the cords and everything. A hundred cubits at the north. And then you have, of course, a hundred at the side. We'll get that later. Because the tabernacle faces the east. And so he says this likewise for the north side, the length thereof, and their hangings shall be a hundred cubits long, twenty pillars, and their twenty sockets of brass, and their hooks, and the hooks of the pillars, and their fillets of silver. And go back to that tabernacle picture. I'm wondering now. They got a little piece. We're talking about these 20 pillars with 100 cubits of fine twine linen. These fillets up here are silver. And you have this regular little post here, but the the bottom is brass. We haven't gotten to the gold yet. This is just like regular wood. But we see silver and we see brass. And we got this regular wood here. So even before you get to the tabernacle, what you see when you look at the court area is Wood, <laughs> silver, brass sockets. And you got that sil those silver hooks and those fillets. Okay. <laughs> got a piece there. When we read the book of Revelations this morning, we saw that Jesus' hair was white like wool. And they speak like what? Brass. Give me sockets of brass. Give me hooks and fillets of silver. When we experience Jesus on earth and we behold his feet, which is the ways of God, Raise a light to my feet, a light to my pathway. Show me my way. His feet like brass. We see God's ways through a glass darkly. We behold it at brass level. Now he is still before all the creation. Therefore, he is still the ancient of days because he's before all things other than God. He's very old. Very old. He was here far earlier than what we 
see him doing in the womb of Mary. He existed. The Holy Spirit served to create a body for one who already existed to enter in so that he could be born into the world. Therefore, one who had a hand in creation of all things was being born into the world. The son of the only begotten, of the father. He's the only begotten of the father. That one was born into the world. Now, we go back to the tabernacle. When you get under the scarlet, purple, fine twin, fine twine linen in blue, and this fourth layer, a deeper revelation than the sin offering, a deeper revelation than a holy man that was simply killed, I get to these pillars, and it's five of them, and they, they stand at the door of the sanctuary. And these pillars are gold and their sockets are brass. We're talking about heavenly things now. And this is what I want to tell you. I was setting this up. When we see them, we will be like them. There is a revelation of Jesus in glory. That looks like a goat. And his feet is brass. So if you walk up on him in heaven and he looks like a gold man with brass feet, don't be shocked. Because there is a revelation of him that takes on that appearance. And even then, there's a deeper revelation. Because that's the door of the sanctuary. And the further you go back, the deeper the revelation.
Your bill will become due if you live in sin. And you will be disconnected. And you won't be able to hear what he's saying. Jesus paid the price on the cross, but guess what? He said, I give you a cross today. Guess what? You got to pay something too for it. And guess what it is? Your whole life. Salvation is free, but if you want to keep flowing in the realm of the Spirit, you can't be bitter and angry. You can't be prideful. You can't go into fornication. You can't entertain lust in your heart. If you want to keep that bill there, guess what? You're going to carry your cross. You carry that cross, you can pick up that phone. I want to talk to you today about badges skin. I want to show you my tatches. How uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the tatches, Lord? Yes, the tatches for the sin offering. Did you not notice that they're brass and it's different from the gold in the lower level? Oh, really? Okay, well, that's some good stuff, Jesus. Let me write that down. You'll be okay. in the blood of Jesus. First. Um, okay. I'm going to get ready to close. Let's see. So here we are in Exodus 25. Verse 31. And you can put my number. What does heaven see when heaven sees you? What was God's plan? You know, we know the scripture where sin did abound, grace did much more abound, right? God allowed us all to die in Adam. But he made us all alive through Jesus. And because he is so gracious and good, I'm not just going to give you life as a man. You died in sin through Adam as a man. I'm going to make you a god in my country. That's how extravagantly good he is. Don't you know when you enter into heaven, you're going to have a crown on your head? It's called a crown of life. You're going to be seated around about the throne with a crown on your head. Like that's something. Had to show me your place in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'll come see your place too. Then. <laughs> come see all your places. You see, in my father's house, you have many mansions. Yeah. Yeah. Many mansions. Yeah. I can just imagine the design of mine. <laughs> yes. That's why, see, we don't have to get out of shape on what we got here. We just pass through this place. It'll be over in three score and ten years, and by reason of strength, four score, right? All right, we just gonna we gonna let our light shine while we're here for as long as we can. God going to make sure that we, if we in the kingdom and we seeking him first, we're going to have food and clothing. And he said you're going to have that if you have the kingdom. Yeah. Seek first the kingdom. You ain't got to worry about it. I will give you these things. But we have a great, great inheritance coming up for us. In heaven. Between now and the next hundred years, I will be in it. Well, that's God want me to live to be 141. It's highly unlikely. But you can do it, Lord. <laughs> you can do it now if you want. I still preach if you want me. <laughs> All right, Exodus 25, verse 31. Thou shalt make a candlestick of what? Pure gold. Pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick.
difference can be made. Its shaft, its branches, its bowls, its knobs, and its flowers shall be the same. Now, God through John helped us out with this when he mentioned the seven churches, the seven go the seven, the seven candlesticks. Oh, I've been missing the seven candlesticks. Now there it may be seven candlesticks, and here it may be a seven-branched candle. But the revelation of the seven candles, whether you're talking about the menorah, or you're talking about the seven candlesticks, or the seven churches that he's walking through, is the same. Jesus is very clear in the book of Revelations that we are the candlesticks. Seven churches are seven candles. The seven stars in my right hand are the seven angels of the church. So we know that when we look at this menorah, it represents the church. Because if you look at the tabernacle and the way it is made, you have the Ark of the Covenant. You have, uh, especially when you're talking about the application of the blood during the Feast of Atonement, the blood sprinkled eastward or at the right hand side. And then you have the presence of God. And then outside of that, because we're in the new covenant, there's no more veil. And then you have the menorah and you have the table of showbread. We represent, the church represents the menorah. Even as the seven churches Represented the seven candlesticks. Man, hold on a second. I, need to add here. I heard that in my spirit, but I like to make sure that I'm here. Sometimes when you're doing a prophetic ministry in front of people, you'd be like, um, sometimes we do this in doubt. Is this bearing witness with your spirit? Because <laughs> you're hearing, right? And you just want to make sure I'm hearing out of the right string. Revelation 4, Dominion, and I was hearing this, but I was like, let me make sure, even though I know I'm in the flow right now. Revelation 4 and 12. No, Revelation 1 and 12, I'm sorry. Revelation 1 and 12. You see it? Revelations 1 and 12. So John hears the voice. He's on the Isle of Patmos. And what does he say? And turn and I saw what? What they made of? Gold. They made of gold. Just like the menorah. Made of pure gold. I want you to, I want you to know this is gold. <coughs> In verse 20, Dominion, of the same chapter. I'll get ready to close with this. I don't want to go much deeper. We're talking about the knobs and the flowers and the, and the bowls. Um, it says that the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in thy right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars and the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks, which what they were made of? Gold. Which thou sawest are the what? Seven churches. When you look at the showbread, you see the tribes of Israel. But when you look at the menorah, you see the seven churches. Now all of them are brought under the heading of the church. What God is saying, and when you see this throughout the scripture, even when you start looking at the elect, as they are numbered in Revelations chapter 7, when we talk about 144,000, God makes a distinction between the tribes of Israel because of the covenant he made with Abraham. That he has an elect among them. So there's a distinction.
distinction made, even though all of us are unified to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Stop. Ezekiel 40, verse 3. This is the last verse, I promise we're done. And this revelation won't take but a second. Now, Ezekiel was pretty deep. Visions of God, God carrying him from one place to another. I mean, this man was amazing. Ezekiel 40, verse 3. I simply want to show you this so that it will help you to be fully affirmed in what I've been sharing with you. Now, this is Ezekiel. He was carried to a certain place. And he says, and he brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of what? Brass. Lord, you carried me somewhere and you showed me a brass man. revealing to him a man that it looks like brass. It's no strange thing to see the Son of God as the appearance of God. You understand? Amen. 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 All right, let's pray. Father, we just bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. I know today was a little different, but you know, I know it's good. Sometimes we talk about characters, sometimes we talk about the text. <laughs> Father, we thank you in Jesus' name everything that you have failed us on today. God, I honor you for your faithfulness in coming to teach. I am totally dependent upon you and need you to do this. And so I just thank you for it. You have, you have not failed in appearing to, to feed your people your word and to teach me your word to pass along. So we thank you for it. Lord, we thank you for the ministry of the church, giving the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher to help supplement what we receive in the realm of the Spirit. You've given these gifts to minister to us, and you said, don't forsake the assembly. You showed us that you walk in the midst of the assembly. You gave us evidence of that by your presence that showed up today. We thank you for it. We thank you for the privilege and the honor of you saving us. We thank you for showing us and revealing to us some of the deeper things of the Spirit of God, deeper things as it relates to the revelation of your Son. Lord, we love on you today. We love on your Son today. We love on the presence of the Holy Spirit. I always say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Keep me dwelling me for eternity. Father, we bless you and thank you. You want to be washed out of the blood before we go. Just want to pray a quick sinner's prayer to get the blood, get a blood bath before we go. Anybody want to get in on this? Only one person, two, okay, three, all right, amen. Amen. You know, the scripture says the thought of foolishness is sin. Even if you thought wrong, you need to be washed. I'm going to get in on this prayer myself all over again. I know we did it at the beginning of the service, but we're going to do it now again. Just repeat this prayer after me, and in doing so, we're going to just acknowledge that Jesus is our Lord, and that we accept him as our Savior, and that we are washed by his blood, and by him we are made into God's perfect righteousness. So let's just pray this prayer so that when we leave here, we're going to be perfectly white. Let's pray. Father God, Father God I, come to you, I come to you, and I acknowledge my sin, but today, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Change me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I accept your salvation. And I accept 
that all of my sins have been put on Jesus. And now I stand in your perfect righteousness. In Jesus' name. Amen. And here's one more thing. He was made accursed so that I can be delivered from every curse. In Jesus' name. Christ is every man and hangs on the Thank you for tuning in to the television broadcast of Bethel Christian Church with Pastors Donald and Dana Hunter. We hope this broadcast was a blessing to you and invite you to join us for the live worship experience at 1906 Beaumont Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70806 at 10 a.m. for Sunday services or online at www.bethelbr.net.